गणस्थ केंद्र डर मंजूर कदिर आहमेद सर रेसपेक्टेड अल डिपार्टमेंटल हेड अब गणस्थ समाज मेडिकल कलेज रेसपेक्टेड टीचार्स सिनियर डॉक्टर्स डियर कलिग इन टर्म एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डर इश्तेक आहमेद वेलकामिंग अल अफ यू टू देक्चर ऑन चाइल्ड लेबर एंड पब्लिक हेल्थ बै डेविड पार्टर पब्लिक हेल्थ प्रफेशनल एंड रिसार्चर we feel very honored to have your presence we hope to learn more about child labor and public health from you respected audience now i glad to call upon the stage today's speaker david parker public health professional and researcher along with professor dr farida adit khan madam honorable principal kana swastha samaj vitik medical college chairi dr David L. Parker is a public health physician and researcher. He was born in 1951, I think, and he is graduated from University of New Mexico with PUS, and in 1973. And in 1978, he got. MD from the University of New Mexico, and after that he admitted to University of Michigan for MPH and obtained a MPH degree in Occupational Epidemiology. And then in 1983 to 84, he, he is the postdoctoral fellow. Occupational Medicine, University of Michigan. Okay. And he is the founder of Center for Occupational Health and Safety in Minnesota. Minnesota. And he, he, his field is very much wide in the world. And he has many photographs in this occupational health. And he has about more than 80 publications in this field, and also there are so many solo photography exhibitions in different galleries organized by different galleries in different countries and states. Okay, and then he has many books also. and his area of interest are worker safety and health and child labor over the last 30 years he has traveled around the world documenting child labor he has received numerous awards including christopher award for works affirming the highest values of the human spirit and the louis lahain award for distinguished services he has also received a meritorious service award from the university of minnesota is it that now he is the senior researcher then partner institute of university of partners institute in us and now i am requesting him to deliver this Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And my interest is in why is work not good for children? Does work matter? What is it about work that's important or not important to children? And and what happens to why is and then, and the other side of that is so why is education important? What does it mean for education? And Here, looking around the audience, it's nice to see so many young women in the medical college. But beyond advanced education in medicine, why is why is it that education is important, especially for uh, girls and young women? What is it about our rights as global citizens that makes education important? Not necessarily an MBBS or an MD degree, but knowing how to read. Why is reading important? Now, I've, I've done a few books on child labor. This is my most recent photographic book, uh, 
before their time, the world of child labor. And I published a book a few years ago, those of you who are interested, um, not a sales pitch, uh, on child labor and, and public health, and try to integrate the questions of, of child labor into the uh, broader questions of, of public health. And while many of us want to see child labor as solely an economic problem, um, just a labor problem, really child labor is an issue of human rights, as, and it's also an issue of, of social justice and public health. So, the goals of this talk, and in reference to Convention 182, so the International Labor Office, I know that there's an International Labor Office uh, group or body here in, in Bangladesh. Uh, Convention 182, that basically serves as, as a treaty. And Convention 182 defined, base, Convention 182, which has been ratified and signed by Bangladesh, the United States, I think the United States is one of the last countries to sign it. And by the way, the United States has not yet ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And in fact, the United States is one of two countries in the world that have not ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. So, why is child, one point, why is child labor a public health issue? How do we bridge the gap with inadequate data concerning the impact of work on children? And since this is a medical audience, I'm primarily going to focus on issues of medicine and health. And how our growth and development affect the consideration of what makes work dangerous. For example, if I have a big piece of machinery and I tell a little kid, or a big kid, doesn't make any difference, or an adult, to go run that piece of machinery, what is it that makes it dangerous? Why should it? Uh, can you hear me? How's that? I'll try to hold it like that. Uh, what is it that makes something dangerous? Why is work sometimes dangerous and sometimes not dangerous? So, can everybody, can you in the back read this? Yeah? Okay, thank you. So this is a model that um, I developed with some of my colleagues, uh, a public health model on child labor. And as you can see, surrounding the entire thing, I think, from our perspective, child labor really exists in a much larger venue, so to speak, of human rights. Child labor really is a human right, the right to education, especially, again, as defined on the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And for those of you not familiar with it, the Convention on the Rights of the Child is a UN document that really defines what are the rights of children. And again, all the countries in the world have signed and ratified this, save the United States and Somalia. And Somalia is not much of a country, so you have to wonder what's going on with my country that we haven't signed, or we've signed but not ratified that convention. So, in the middle you can see we have the individual, the family, and the community. And on the top we have economics, education, social values, legislation and enforcement, and health and well-being. And these things all influence the family. We have the immediate consequences of work, which is hazardous exposures, labor skills, and development and income. I mean, let's face it, some kids need to work because if they don't work, they don't have food. On the other hand, if they work, or if they're bonded laborers, or they're working for a minimum labor, then what's minimum wages, then what's happened? And this becomes a, a terribly vicious cycle for families, especially, and the, especially poor families. And then there's the longer term consequences on health, education, and economics. And while as a child of five or eight might be working because she or he needs to uh, gain, get food, just, which is their only pay is food, or they get money to buy food, in the long run, in fact, this has terribly adverse economic consequences for the family. And these things just cycle on each other. And this is an intergenerational cycle. So what, and, and especially this is true for, for little girls and young women. And, I, and I've often said,